Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Uh, please invite your friends and let us have a good time together um, answering an article sent to me by one of you. Uh, you know, through history, Muslims, uh, or let us say Islam, because it's an empty cult, they try to copy other belief. Judaism, Christianity, Hindus, Sabians, you name it. And one of you sent me an article, and I will put it in the screen so you can read with me. And the article is focusing in Muslim. This is a Muslim guy. He's, I think he have a PhD or something. Uh, the focus in that in Islam, not only in Christianity, there is relationship with God, and in this case, his name is Allah, which is not our God. In Islamic spirituality, you know, before I go on the topic, I, I like to butcher the sentence. You know, many of us, when we study, uh, let us say, anything, uh, I hope my internet is not going bad. Is going bad? I hope not. <laughs> because we have a bad storm. Uh, anyway, I like to butcher words because this is the game here. The game is when Muslim they try to play with the words to make you believe in something is not exist in their cult. Look with me here. The title have the word relationship. And then we have spirituality. I challenge any Muslim to tell me where is the spirituality and where is the relationship in Islam. As an example, if you do something as a duty, and if you don't do it, you will be punished physically. How that can be spiritual? Muslims, they practice beating people up if they don't pray. Actually, if you don't pray for three days, you'll be considered a kafir and you should be killed. They give you a warning. If you continue, then you will be killed. So how that can be spiritual if you are forced to do it? If Islam is based on spirituality, then spirituality is something volunteer. You cannot force me to have relationship as this guy call it here. Because if this is a relationship, what kind of relationship is that that you force me to have relationship with you? Are we listening people? You cannot force somebody to love you. And if you force somebody to say, I love you, that's not love. That is hate, actually. So all of Islamic relationship is based on slavery and obedience. And the obedience have to happen, otherwise you will be punished physically here in earth. What I talk about in, in, in Judgment Day, no now. You don't pray, we beat you up. You don't fast, we beat you up. If you continue, we kill you. So when they use the word relationship, this is a false, absolutely false, because you cannot establish relationship by forcing your belief on others. Now the Muslim, they will say to you, they will quote a verse from the Quran says that the Quran says uh, there is no compulsion in religion. That is a false statement. First of all, this verse was not about not to force non-Muslims to convert to Islam. It was the opposite. Because if this verse meant what it meant, then why Muhammad he launched attack saying convert or die? Are you saying Muhammad was a false Muslim? He don't understand Islam and you Muslim understand better? If we go and do little, uh, we will go back here. If we go and see what Muhammad said, which one we should, we should listen to, an article or Muhammad's statement? This is Muhammad's statement, explaining Islam to us and the relationship between Muhammad and his God and the relationship between the God and a human being. If you read with me, all of those are very authentic. Look how many, look how many. Muhammad making it clear that the relationship for him as a prophet between him and between his God and between him and the people and between people and their God is convert or die. 
Read carefully. I've been ordered to kill, not to fight. You see the word here, fight. It's a correct translation, by the way, because in, in English, it means this is the word, you know, I mean, close to Arabic. But in Arabic, the word uqatil, it means fight to kill. Because we can say the same word in English to say uh, fight, uh, husband and wife, they are fighting, right? But doesn't mean they are killing each other, right? But no, here, I've been ordered to fight, fight to kill, uqatil, coming from the word qatala, which means kill. Umirtu an uqatil. And the duty of killing is to fulfill something. What is that? It's in the front of you. You have to do certain things. And if you do those certain things, then your blood and your money is protected from the gang of Muhammad. And look how many the stories on Muhammad repeating those things. And all of them, they are very accurate, authentic. When you read it, Let us take this one as an example. We will zoom in so you can read. The Prophet said, I have been commanded, I'm commanded. Okay, he's commanded by who? Who is the one making the command? If you ask any Muslim, he will tell you, Muhammad is a prophet, he's commanded by God. Thank you very much. So the relationship of Allah with a human being is worship me or Muhammad will kill you and here you see the whole article is a fabrication right away from the beginning because either this guy he is talking about something is true or he is fabricating how there is a relationship between God and a human and this God he care for us but if you don't believe in me I will send Muhammad and he will rape your wife he would take your money. And actually it says that clearly, read carefully. The prophet said, I am commanded to fight with men, men, which means mankind. Till, till what? Till they stop fighting him? No. Till they stop insulting Allah? No. Till they testify there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his pro prophet. <laughs> and then not only that, even if you witness that Muhammad is a prophet by, by sword, not enough. You have to face the Qibla, which means direction of the prayer of the Kaaba. And eat as we eat, which means you slaughter as we slaughter. As simple as that. If you, eat, if you eat pork, we will kill you. And you pray like us. When you do that, their life and their property are unlawful for us. So Muhammad make himself a person who can steal your property lawfully based on the relationship of Allah and mankind. So what is the relationship between us and Allah? If you don't accept Allah as your God, he will unleash his beast Muhammad and the gang of Muhammad, ISIS and Al-Qaeda to come to your house, rape your wife, take your kids, enslave you or kill you. And it is lawful for him to take your property, to take your money, to take your wife because he is God on earth. So when somebody sends us an article and says to me, you know, like the, the person who sent me this article saying, I, I find it troubling. I found it, I, for me, I found it funny. But I understand people who do not have not much knowledge, you know, they can be fooled by this. And then if we go back to the article, you will see that this article right away when I was reading, like, I mean, I just opened it. Uh, uh, not the same, uh, it sent to me yesterday, I opened it today afternoon just to see what this link is about. And then right away I found that this person is taken as, a, as an example of teaching, of his teaching is Ibn Arabi. Ibn Arabi is a Sufi. He is like their God. If you do not know what Sufi is, Sufi is far away from being Muslim. If you go right now search in the news, bombing Sufi mosque attacking Sufi mosques. Muslims, they keep killing them for simply they are not Muslims. Just to give you an idea about the Sufi. I don't know how many of you saw some Muslim dancing, doing crazy stuff in the mosque. Those are Sufi. Erdogan is Sufi. This is why belly dancing is okay. Uh, you know, I mean, Sufi, they are Sufi. The music is okay. They are, they are not Muslims. Sufi are not Muslims. 
However, when you ask Muslims just about numbers, they say they count everybody as a, as a Muslim. They count even the Shia. But the second you start debating them, they say, oh, Shia, not Muslims. Here we go. So we, we take 400 million Muslims or 500 million out of the calculation. So why are you calculating? Uh, Sufi are not Muslims. So we take 100 or 150 or 200 million. Oh, Ahmadiyya are not Muslims. So we take uh, whatever millions. So w when you ask, start asking question, who's a Muslim, you will find nobody is a Muslim. But just to... Uh, Refresh your memory about who is the Sufi. I hope we will not lose the internet because, as I said, the internet is not doing good. Give me a second. All of us, we knew that Muhammad, he forbid the music, and even he said that the one who play music, Allah will turn them into pigs and monkeys. Music, dancing, anything of this is forbidden. I just searched for a second in the internet, in, you, in YouTube, and there is tons of video. This is an example from Shishenia. Many of you maybe do not know that Shishenia is a Sufi country. And this is why they have no problem to attack other Muslims. As an example, uh, when Putin in Russia, he want uh, to attack Al-Qaeda, he sent the Shishenian to attack Al-Qaeda in Syria. Why? Because the Shishinian and the Al-Qaeda, they are enemies. Al-Qaeda believe they are not Muslims. Sufi, they believe Al-Qaeda are not Muslims. So they kill each other. This is what they do in their mosque, and this is how they pray. Okay, enough of this party. Let's see a different party. This is in Pakistan. Okay, enough of this party. Let's see another party. Simply, it's like a bunch of crazy people, you know, and they're like, a, I mean, this see the spirituality is working very good, you know, it's obviously, this is very spiritual, like very nice, you know, it's very romantic, people jumping, ripping their clothes, and I know what, what, like, we, 
the second the second you see it first time you think you are in a crazy hospital like you know those people who lose their mind you know they wear a rope and then they start jumping and doing crazy stuff uh, you know and you don't know what they are doing you don't understand what's happening but this is simply what what sophie is you know look at the, this this is their leader look what leader is doing you know look at this guy he will jump now he got crazy and he start beating the people in front of him look 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 at this guy look you know he, he became like a beast you know this is how spiritual it is look at this guy what he's doing so this is what the sufi and this is the one who wrote the article where it's coming from so they try to make us believe that this is a spiritual how in the world this is a spiritual what do you tell me anyway you can search on the internet search for sufi uh, crazy dance or whatever you will find tons of those things which is really very weird uh, if a spirituality is exist in Islam in general then Islam will be a different religion let us see look at this All right. Eh, eh, illallah, la ilaha illallah, which means they are saying the shahada, repeat, eh, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, shake your head, and bum, 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 that's it, that's it, this is spirituality. Since when spirituality is this madness? Somebody might show you like there's some, some churches, which is false Christians, doing crazy stuff too, right? But this is what we are talking about. This is not Islamic. Same as some, you know, I saw some videos of crazy stuff, some cult leaders doing in their churches, which is the church of Satan, obviously. So when those people, they make an article trying to deceive us, speaking about spirituality, those are Sufi and they are not Muslims. Secondly, how in the world you quote someone like Ibn Arabi, who is a crazy person? I mean, this guy, people worship him. His people worshiping, as you notice, those sheikhs, those are, those are small sheikhs compared, this is, the, this is their god, Ibn Arabi is their god. If somebody gets sick, he go touch him. If somebody, uh, you know, like, it, it's, you know it's, it's a crazy. And then you will see this guy. Oh, I did not finish with the title. Relationship and spirituality. First of all, if one is sick, you see, you can read the article, by the way, by yourself. The article is very long. It's so stupid to the point. I cannot believe how stupid the person who wrote it. And look, all the quotation he's quoting Ibn al-Arabi al-Ghazali. Al-Ghazali is a kafir. He is an, he, he's an atheist, actually. I mean, this guy, he denied God. So this is not an Islamic view of anything. This is a fiction stories if you try to find something about the spirituality is talking about where we will find it in the quran as an example let us go down the root of meaning attachment quality in islamic faith first of all there's nothing it's called islamic faith islam is not a faith we just showed you how muhammad he said either you convert or you die how this is going to be a faith you know what i mean Faith is something you do voluntarily. You don't force people to join it. So Islam is not a faith. Islam is a gang. Join my gang or you die. Or you have to pay me for protection, as it says in the Quran, chapter 9, verse 29. Muhammad, he ordered the Muslim to attack the Christians because in verse number 28, the Muslims, when they, when they kicked out uh, everybody from Mecca, there's no more jobs, there's no more money. The good ones, they are, they are either dead or they flee. Who left is the gang of Muhammad, who they knew nothing except war. So now we, what we will do? What is next? So right away, Muhammad, he come to them with a surah from the Quran. And he said, okay, don't worry. You know, what we can do right now, we can go uh, attack the Christians, attack the Jews, and take their money. Allah will reach you. 
This is the chapter 9. If we go to chapter, verse number 28, you will see it says the following. When Muhammad, he ordered them, claiming that Allah, he, he told him to not to allow non-Muslims to be in the city. And here, by the way, exposing the lies of spirituality too, again. Because if you are a spiritual with God, how a spirituality with God will make you kick somebody out of his home? How somebody spiritual, he hurt his neighbor physically, just because he is not a believer. Since when a spiritual believer, he need to hurt his neighbor physically, because he's a spiritual. I mean, you know, like uh, there's many example people they use uh, uh, for, uh, uh, let us say, for wisdom, which I find it funny, by the way. Like they, they, they people they quote Mahamata Gandhi. Mahamata Gandhi, he says to the to the uh, to the bridge people, uh, "You are not uh, Christ-like. I like your Christ, but I don't like your Christianity." Something like this, he said, which I find very funny, because Christ is a Christ, and Christianity is a Christ. If they are not doing what Christ teach, then you are mixing things up and you are a fool. Here we find the same. There is people who claim to be spiritual, but yet they want to do physical harm. How you can be spiritual, but you are harming others? How you can be spiritual, but you are following a prophet, he says, convert or die? How you follow a prophet who says, kick your neighbor out of his house, and you claim to be spiritual. You see how the lie collapsed immediately without reading the whole article. All who you believe, those that are polytheist, are polluted. The fact, by the way, translation is false. What polluted? I mean, that, that, that's how disgusting it is. You are a spiritual and you believe that your neighbor is polluted? I mean, do you see how, how much a spiritual you are? <laughs> You know what I mean? And by the way, translation is false because the word in Arabic is najis. Najis means filthy like the sewage, which means nothing can clean you. This is the word. Not polluted is filthy dirty. Nothing can clean you. And because they are filthy dirty, don't allow them to approach the mosque of Mecca before they are dirty, which is very funny. When you see the 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 the, the uh, uh, the Islamic lies never stop and they say that Islam is a very tolerant religion. In the time of Muhammad, the Muslim themselves, they say around the Kaaba there was more than 360 idol, which means 360 gods. And Arab are fine with that. You bring your God, you put him in the Kaaba, nobody, nobody want to kill you for you have different God. Which means the Arab before Muhammad, they were way more tolerant after Arab, after Muhammad. Muhammad, he brought the gang mentality. Join me or die. The Arab before Muhammad, they have all their gods around the Kaaba. Each one of them, he worship his God, including the God of Muhammad, and nobody kill anyone. When Muhammad took a place, because he is very spiritual, between two brackets, he want to kill everybody and kick them out. You see how spiritual he is? <laughs> a person who is a spiritual, he will not do what you see. He will say, don't touch them, don't hurt them, love them. Correct? That what a person who is coming from a spiritual belief. I remember the one is talking here supposedly is Allah. Not Muhammad supposedly. And then he, say, he says, after this year. And then if you fear a property, look at this. Money is, a, is the business. Allah will reach you. From his grace, his grace, or from our pocket as a Christian, let us read the verse after. How Allah will re reach the Muslim who they are spiritual, according to the, uh, the article. Fight and kill the Christians. Fight and kill those who don't believe in Allah, nor they believe in the last day. And what the purpose of this fight? To reach you, if you fear proper poverty. Do you see it? I mean, do you see how spiritual this religion is? The one who keep asking for link, link, link. What's wrong with you, my friend? Just I'm, I'm showing you the chapter. I'm showing you the verse. Read, search in the in the in the internet. Quran chapter nine verse twenty eight. Be mature, please. Uh,
What Bismillah have to do with spirituality? I mean, this is funny. Uh, let me show you your question. You see, I want people to learn how to take the words apart. Don't just be a person who copy paste words. You have to take the words apart. If somebody says Bismillah, that make him spiritual in the name of God. I mean, this is the most silly thing, a silly argument. I'm not, I'm not saying you are silly, but if you are saying that, if they say to you that this is spiritual, that is very silly. So anyone who say in the name of God, the Muslim they say in the name of God when they kill the cow, when they kill the chicken, when they kill you. Allahu Akbar. How that can be spiritual? Maybe you do not know what spiritual is. Spiritual is not you saying words. Spiritual is you in spirit connected to someone else. Not saying a word. So if I have a dog, his name is Fufu, I call him Fifi, that make me spiritual? With the dog? So we have to be smart when we speak about spirituality. Spirituality is not words you say. It's something you feel in the heart. This is why it's called a spirit, spiritual. It's in a spirit. It's not physical. It's not by saying words. It is in a spirit. So you need to think deeply about the definition before you talk about it. Otherwise, you are far away from our topic. Now here, if Muhammad is a spiritual, then what is the need of this, all of this? What is the spirituality here? Why Muhammad did not pray to his God to guide all mankind? In his spirit, he will guide them, and that's it. What, what is the need of the war? Why Allah will not reach you, Muslims, from the poverty by taking money from the pocket of your neighbor, the Christian and the Jew and the Hindu and etc.? Why is that? This is spiritual, brother. Right? We have um, Mahmoud saying scared to answer. Mahmoud, what is your question? Because always I'm scared of Muslim asking me questions. Mahmoud, do you remember last yesterday I asked you to call me and you coward and you run away? What is your question, Mahmoud? I will put it in the screen for you. Anyone knows what this, the, the question this kid he said? So we can put it in the screen. Give me the question, Mahmoud, so we can laugh at your question. Because always Muslim, by the way, when they try to defend Islam, they get they get spanked badly as a response. And here I'm waiting for Mahmoud to give me the question which is asking me to answer what I don't know what it is. It does not say fight to kill. Guys, it doesn't say fight to kill. Hold on, let, let me show you, let me show you. I mean, when I say stupidity is amazing, I mean it. So fight by what? Your prophet was making war by what? He was using seven ajwa? Guys, it doesn't mean fight to kill. Okay, he was fighting using what? I will give you three options to choose one. Your prophet, he was fighting by sandals. Your prophet, he was fighting by throwing fruits at you or gum. Or he was using a sword. Choose one for me, Mahmoud. When I say, the second you became a Muslim, you lose your mind, I mean it. I mean, how in the world this person is functioning? It doesn't mean kill CP. So it means what? <laughs> and look how stupid you are. The hadith says, then their blood is saved from me. Then their blood. Do you see the word blood? Let me show you. You are blind like your prophet. Then, then their blood and their property, their blood and their life. You see, by the way, here, the, the translation is false. It says their life. It doesn't say life. It says blood. Their blood and their property are unlawful for us. And you are saying to me, the prophet doesn't say kill. So what is making your life in jeopardy? Because he is going to throw a sandal at you? And just to show you how they lie in the translation, just change, change the translator. I mean, the same hadith, different story. You will see it says blood. Their blood. What happened here? Why, where, is the, where is the word the blood is gone? Here is, it says life. Let's see this one here. Here we go. You see the word blood? This is the same story. Their blood. CP. It doesn't say fight to kill CP. You are lying. Huh? So you're a prophet. How you? Maybe your prophet was a mosquito. He don't want to kill you. He just suck your blood. Is that the case? Mr. Mosquito Muhammad? So you are telling me your prophet, he... Speaking about saving your blood because he was a mosquito. Eh, makes sense. I think Muhammad is a mosquito anyway. As you see, he's sucking the blood of others. 
So anyway, ignore this kid. He's just a kid. And as usual, they try to refute me. They got their prophet busted badly. And now I have five fingers in the bum of Muhammad. So going back to spirituality, spirituality, people who they are spiritual, first of all, we need to know we are talking to who? About who? Do you even the Muslim knows who is Allah? Muhammad never spoke to Allah, never saw Allah, never met Allah. So how there is a spiritual relationship between Muhammad? Never, you know, if you ask any Muslim, how Muhammad he received his message from God? They say to you, Jibreel. So where is the spirituality? Did Allah contact Muhammad with his, in his spirit? No, he sent him Jibreel. The Muslim, they say Jibreel is a spirit, which is very stupid, by the way, because the Quran says that angels are not spirit. <laughs> the Muslims are so confused, they stole words from the Christian belief, so the Holy Spirit became Jibreel. And just to show you that this is impossible to believe that angels are a spirit in Islam, chapter 78, verse number 38, saying the following. On the day when the spirit and the angels stand in raw. If the angels are a spirit, then why Allah saying the spirits and the angel? Stupidity is amazing again. Now, Muhammad, he never received a message from Allah except all his Quran. You can ask any Muslim. All his Quran delivered to him by Jibreel. So where is the spiritual connection between Muhammad? So you are saying to me, the one who wrote the article, you have a spiritual connection with God, but yet this God, he don't want to connect with his prophet in his spirit. You guys, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? If Muhammad is, a, have anything to do with spirituality, he is the first one to have that. Not the Muslims after that have spirituality, but Muhammad don't have it. If we ask any Muslim here, who is a Muslim can help us? Did Allah send any verse to Muhammad, any Quranic verse except by Jibreel? Any Muslim can tell me um, you are wrong. There's a verse Muhammad he received, not from Jibreel. Hmm? Any Muslim want to prove me wrong? Look at them, how quiet they are. So how there is a spiritual connection? Your prophet himself, he never be connected with his God in a spiritual way. As an example, we have a book in the Bible, it's called the Book of Revelation. Book of what? Revelation. God, he revealed to his apostle in his spirit. He did not send an angel delivering to him a book. Someone, he squeezed him like Jibreel squeezed Muhammad. God himself inspired the person and delivered to him revelation. That is called revelation by spirit. So when Muhammad here received a revelation by spirit? Never. The one he keeps saying to me, blah, blah, go sleep. My friend, I mean, are you stuck? Look like you have a diarrhea of the word sleep. At least say something useful. Here we go. We send you free shipping and hand it into Allah. Go sleep, Christian prince, but you have no answer for me. You're a stupid fool like your prophet who believe a woman have a sperm coming from her, from her chest. This is the best you have, go sleep. And look at you, you are possessed. You want me to sleep while you are staying here. I mean, you are stupid, at least close the door and leave. And then I will go, you know, if there's nobody listening to me, I will go sleep. But you are here. So I'm going to go and you are here. Stupid, like your prophet. We continue. As long Muhammad, he never received any inspiration from his God as Quran, except by a delivery person, then where is the spiritual relationship of Muhammad and Allah? Anyone can tell me? Muhammad don't have it, you have it? Muhammad himself, the founder of this cult, actually he's not the founder, Waraq ibn Nufal is the founder. He don't have it, he never connected with Allah. If we go in the hadith, just for the sake of fun. Go 
we don't have many people now because this is not the time we usually I go live on air, but it's okay. Doesn't matter really how many people. We have only 500 something. Mm, it's okay. God is good. If you remember, when first time Muhammad received the Quran, an angel, actually he doesn't say even an angel, a guy appeared to him in the cave and he squeezed him three times. And after he squeezed him three times, he told, he keeps saying to him, read. And Muhammad, you do not know what this guy is talking about. He says, read, I cannot read, according to the Muslim understanding. And then he went to his, his wife, Khadija, who is way older than him. He married her because of her money. And you know, money talk. So he went to his Khadija and he was shaking crazy. His neck is, you know, this is called the, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, I don't know what it's called in English. Like when somebody, uh, I don't know if you know, like there's some people, they feel in the ground, you know, they feel in the ground, they lose, they, they lose conscious or they start shaking. This is exactly what Muhammad was suffering from. And he imagined things. So look what happened. When he was in the cave of Hara, according to, to Muhammad, he, a man, he appeared to him. And here it says in the translation, an angel, he cut me. An angel, he cut me. Let us read in Arabic, it says, فَجَاءَهُ الْمَلَكْ فِيهِ فَقَالَ اِقْرَأْ But this is not Muhammad saying, an angel come to me. The person who is reporting the story, saying the word angel, but the guy, he came to him as a man. And then the prophet, he said to him, uh, مَا أَنَا بِقَارِئِ According to Muslim, he is saying, I cannot read. According to my understanding, he is saying, read what, you idiot? Because when somebody say to somebody, read, you have to give him a book. The word Iqra is coming from the Aramaic, the ancient Aramaic, from Qarra wa Ra'a, which means say with his lips, see with his eyes. Ra'a in Arabic or Aramaic, is, it, uh, the, the source of it is see, see, Ra. Qarra, so he move his lips and say what he see. This is what reading means. So, if the angel saying to him, read, and Muhammad, he did not he did not say to him, I do not know how to read. But this, the Muslim, they understand this because always they are awkward. Even in understanding their own religion, not, even, not only our religion, or our belief. So he says, so he came to him in the cave, and then suddenly this, he jumped on him. He told him, read, that Muhammad, he says, I do not know how to read. This is the Muslim translation. And then the, uh, the, 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 the person, or this person who came to him, he cut him forcefully and he pressed me so hard I could not bear it anymore and then he released me and then he said to me again read I mean do you see the spirituality here even the first time Muhammad he have any contact with the high authority in this case supposedly an angel it was physically torture so where is the where is the spiritual Muhammad? You know, like I have to use uh, I have to use some images to explain to you what I'm saying. <clears throat> oh, let us see. Guys, do you like the topic today? Is it good for you? Are we good? All right. I'm just uh, trying to find something we can use in the screen to explain to you something. And where is the pictures? I'm searching for a, is like a, a, a okay, let's see this. 
I was trying to find a guy, but it's all of them they are girls. I don't know why. But anyway. So Muhammad, oh, I found a guy. Hold on. I found a guy, a weirdo. This is one of the weirdo you can see. Let us, let us focus first in the desert one. It's, it's nicer. So Muhammad was not sitting doing yoga. And then his God, he inspired him. Muhammad was physically tortured by a stranger and all what he is saying to him read and then Muhammad he said to him I do not know how to read and then the angel he squeezed him again he said to him read I don't know who is the stupid here the angel or Muhammad because the guy he just told you he cannot read did you give him a book why you keep repeating the same thing so he squeezed him three times, and this is again the dilemma of uh, three time in Islam. Everything has to be happening three times, but Islam is against Trinity. Why the angel he squeezed Muhammad three times? No Muslim knows. Why Muhammad say Assalamu Alaikum three times? I mean, it's very weird actually to go in a house and say Assalamu Alaikum. You say Alaikum, sir. Assalamu Alaikum. Alaikum. Assalamu Is it enough once? No, you have to say it three times. You know, like uh, when you do the, the, the ablution, you have to do things, uh, your limb, washing your limb three times too. Your nose, your ears, blah, blah, blah. Three times, everything three times. Because the three times make things perfect. So how come three times in Islam make things perfect, but three times or three person, one God in Christianity does not? So Muhammad never received any spiritual contact. Muhammad, he looked like a fool. He's trying to copy somebody else. I will show you this fool. Here we go. Look at this fool. This fool, he went to India and he decided to become an Indian. With my respect to the Indian, who they are practicing this uh, kind of practice. This is a blonde man. He want to be a yoga, uh, uh, the love guru, the love guru, you know? So Muhammad, he was not the love guru. Muhammad was a physical killing machine. And even his God, he never contacted with him directly. He sent him an angel, according to the Muslims, who physically torture him in order to activate the beast. By the way, I saw a lot of those fools, white people in Asia, you know, like you, once I saw a guy, he was dressed like a, a Buddha monk. He made me die laughing. I start talking with him, he ran away, the coward. Anyway, potato. This is what happened, by the way, when you grow up in a family who they are empty. You have a vacuum machine inside you and somebody will fill the space. Either it's going to be the cult of Islam or the cult of Buddha or any other cult. There's millions of them. You name it. And now he's happy. Yeah, yeah, waste your time. Have fun. Uh, spend the whole day doing this. Put your hand together and close your eyes. Uh, what about you go feed some poor, poor people, do something useful, you know? Go open your eyes, see God, what he did to you. Uh, focus on yourself. Now you are God. God is, uh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. The children of Trump, they killed the dragon. Yeah, uh, oh yeah. Okay. Anyway. Forget about this fool. So we go back to Muhammad. Uh, my screen is frozen. Hold on. Oh boy. Uh, man, man, man. I don't know why this uh, website sometimes freeze. I mean, this browser, I'm using a vast browser. Let me open it again. Give me a second. By the way, I'm not making fun of people. I'm making fun of stupidity. I don't make fun of people. I make fun of stupidity. Now, many of you might not like it. It's your business. Who care? I'm not here to do and say what people like to hear. Absolutely not. All right, let's see where is the article. Because I have to close now the browser. I lost even the article to go over it. Where is the article? Here we go. Going back to the article. 
We found it. I hope the browser will not close on us again. Uh, so when a Muhammad and he try, and he, this case is a Sufi, he's tried to, to speak about spirituality, then there is other question beside that Muhammad never have contact with his God in his spirit. He have it through a delivery boy. So how that can be spiritual prophet? Secondly, in Islam, Muslims, they have to pray to their God in the language. They don't understand how that can be spiritual. You see, spiritual is you speaking to your God in your heart, and your God is speaking to you in heart. But Muslims are not allowed to pray to Allah except in the language of Muhammad. So how that can be spiritual? Number three, Muslims are forced to pray, which means... It, uh, prayer in Islam is a duty. We, you know, when we show you this hadith here, if we go back, Muhammad making it clear, if you don't pray, we will kill you. Right? How this is then a spiritual prayer? Because if it's a spiritual, Muhammad should not allow anyone to harm someone for not connecting with God. Because this is spiritual at the end of the day. Muhammad is doing the opposite. Muhammad saying, if you don't want me to, sh to shed your blood, you have to pray, which means a prayer is not a choice of a believer. Prayer is a must, a duty, physical duty. If you don't bum up, head down, your prophet will kill you. And as you see the reference in the front of your head, So you have to establish some a, a specific practice, not a specific, uh, you know, spiritual things. What Muhammad he want from you is to do physical things. Those physical things involve how you act as a prayer. You have to stand up in a certain time, and here a certain time is a different story. I mean, why I have to pray in certain time? Why God is not always there? Yes, He is there. The Muslim they will say. Well, no, he's not. If you go in the hadith, you will find that Allah is not always there. As an example, the hadith says, and when we say the hadith, mean Muhammad said, usually. This is Muhammad, and this is Sahih hadith. You find it in Bukhari, you find it in Sahih Muslim, so this is very authentic. It says the following. Allah Messenger, and look here, look, 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 look at this, guys, look at the madness. Those people, they worship a man, his name is Muhammad. This is fear, by the way, this is not worship, this is fear. P-B-U-H, they can't even say the name of Muhammad without saying some words behind it to praise him. You see, we speak, we say Jesus, but do you know who is Jesus? He's our God. We, we, just, we call him Jesus. The word Muhammad itself is an insult to God. It's an infidel word. Why? Because you are saying that Muhammad is the praised one. This is not a name. This is a title. If Muhammad is the praised one, so who is Allah? The praised two? So, the messenger of Allah, PBUHFM, WWAM station said, Our Lord the Blessed, the Superior, come every night down in the nearest heaven to us when the last third of the night remains, saying, If there is anyone invoking me, so I may respond to invocation. Okay, let's see, this is spiritual now. Even the spirituality here is funny. A person is praying to Allah. Allah cannot hear him unless he come down to the lowest heaven. Why? Obviously, he is using the same internet cable company I'm using. His connection is very weak. That's why sometimes I lose my connection. If Islam is a spiritual religion, then you pray to God anytime. God hear you. You speak your God in your heart anytime you wish. God is there for you. 
in Islam? No. Allah come down in a certain time, certain moment, in the third part of the night, which proving that Muhammad is a fool again because he think all the earth have the same time. Third night is going to be in Australia. Third night is going to be in America. It's one time. Otherwise, Allah will keep coming up down like a yo-yo. Do you know your yo-yo? Based on this hadith, your God, Allah, is a yo-yo. Bing, boom, bing, boom, bing, boom. I feel sorry for him. I mean, how many times you have to come down? How many how many time time uh, zone we have in this earth? Anyone knows? Can somebody tell me the, the correct uh, number? Anyone? How many time zone we have? So if Muhammad is being truthful here about this story, that's mean Allah, he keep coming every two hours maybe, right? That's funny. And the funny he says in one of the verses he quote in the article that wherever you go, Allah is with you. But if you go and see that article, you see, you see that chapter, Muhammad is trying to scare the Muslims so they will give Muhammad money. Let us go to the Quran. Wherever you go, Allah is with you. But the, when Muhammad say no, it's not true. Have you ever heard of a God he needs a mortgage? Who is he who will offer Allah a generous loan? And this verse, Muslim scammers, they use it always to collect donation. If you remember Mimi Hijab after he had his debate with the funny debate with David Wood, right away after less than a few hours, he make a video says, and who is he will offer Allah a generous loan? And then they said, brother, there's more than a hundred, whatever, a thousand people leave Islam every day in whatever, you know? So brother, donate for us so we can save Islam. Okay, so this, is, this is the scam. This is the scam. This is the scam verse. All Muslims they use this verse to collect donation. Here you notice that this scam involves money and there's nothing spiritual because how in the world I give Allah a loan, and that loan will be given to Muhammad, so he can launch a war against the neighbors, or he have more wives. And by doing giving Allah a loan, Allah will give me reward. Is that a bribe to God? Am I buying my salvation? Do we have any Muslim want to say something? When I give a loan to Allah, what exactly I am going to gain? Heaven, right? Actually, the verse saying, read carefully. So he will multiply it for for him, manifold. Muhammad is tempting tempting people, but not in a spiritual way, by money. Give me money, I will, we will give it to you back. Allah will give it to you back multiple times. Huh? The verse after it, you will see Muhammad, he need the money for what? Actually, the verse before it saying that to fight for the cause of Allah. Do you see how spiritual this cult is? I mean, we are so spiritual that we need money to kill. And this God is super God to the point he want to take a loan from you. <coughs> I will not be surprised if Muhammad was exist, he will make a Patreon so he can collect donation loan for Allah. And he will take the loan to buy weapons so he can kill the neighbors. That is Islam. So the argument or the statement of Islam in having connection with Allah, that is a stupid statement. And we are not done yet. You see, if Islam is a spiritual religion, shouldn't Allah himself be spirit? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, how in the world this idiot, he's speaking about a spiritual spiritual relationship with Allah if Allah himself is not a spirit you know spiritual it's me it's a spirit connecting with the spirit correct 
I cannot have a spiritual relationship with a stone because the stone does not have a spirit. According to Islam, Allah has no spirit and he is not a spirit. So how is spirituality work for you? Zahra Jawad, you will answer me. Ah, Zahra, you are a female. Your prophet, he says women are half a brain. Actually, it's very weird that you are a female saying you can answer me when those who have a beard, long beard, they don't dare even to speak to me. And why in the world I want to speak to someone, she believes she is half a brain. I have to be half a brain too to, to, to speak to you. Isn't it your prophet, the one who said this? Let me show you. This is your prophet speaking about you. He said, نَقِصَاتُ عَقْلٍ وَدِينٍ They have half a brain or less brain and religion. Do you see it? And he claimed that most of the people who go to heaven, sorry, to hell is women. So you are going to call me to refute me half a brain? In fact, if you have little intelligence, you will leave Islam immediately. But look like your prophet was right about you, not about all women, but about you. Because there's no woman who respect herself, she accepts such a garbage as speaking about herself. Look at this, your lack in wisdom can be, will judge in the fact, in the Quran, the evidence, two women are equal to one man. So in order to talk to me, you have to be two women. For you are half a human according to Muhammad. Do you see it? And you want to call me and you want to answer me from the Quran. Well, this is Quran, here we go, your prophet is answering you. Your lack in wisdom, a woman, she asked Muhammad, where is our lack in intelligence? How we have a lack of intelligence? Look at the spiritual man. He said, your lack of wisdom can be well judged from the fact that in evidence that two women are is equal to one man. <laughs> Zara is a Shia. Who okay, cares a Shia? The Shia is even worse. The Shia, they sell you in the market for muta. She had the practice muta until now. So Zahra, she is a woman, she practiced muta, and we don't want to go there because it's dirty. How in the world, if you are a Shia, you accept to be part of that cult for a second, allowing you to be rented for a man? Just to show you what the Shia believe. Zahra, she is saying, just to show you, that this is all spiritual, by the way. This is all is help, helping us to understand what is a spiritual in Islam. There's nothing spiritual. All is about sex and money. And, you know, it's even the heaven have nothing there except sex. But even in earth, it's the same garbage. Let me show you. Give me a second. Zara, she will know more than her scholars? For sure not. Let us see what the Shia believe as long as she is a Shia. Shia and the Sunni, by the way, believe in the same garbage in this, when it comes to the Muta. But the, the, the Sunni, they claim that they stop practicing this garbage, which make them supposedly better now. <laughs> Look at this. This is what Zahra believe. She is a rented woman. This is alislam.org. This is not my website, this is your website. And they are explaining to us how Allah order Muslim men and women to rent each other, which means the man he can rent the women and the man he pay the women for a service. And what is the service? You know what I'm talking about. So it says here, in some works, a special term is applied to women who participate in muta between two bracket musta'jara. What musta'jara mean? Read carefully. Rented. What? Rented women. Spirituality in Islam. I mean, have you ever, you see, you go, you will find the Christian monks, they go and stay in a, in a mountain cave for 30, 40 years. You know, this is a spiritual. Eating from the fruits of the, of the earth, wherever they find even grass, 
they have no luxury that is a spiritual but where is the spirituality here women she is rented in Islam and they are explaining to you how the rent work there's a contract muta is considered as a kind of rental because in general man basic aim is a, this kind of marriage is a sexual enjoyment of a woman and in return his enjoyment to the women receives certain amount of money and property I don't know how, how much money Zahra she is making a month but I hope she is doing good read the conditions guys Zahra she is saying read the condition what conditions the man he offer you do you like to sleep with me for 10 hours you say yes how much you charge you will pay me you accept you say to him I give you myself to do boom boom he said to you I take you for three hours to do boom boom this is the condition here we go they are in front of you here we go the formula <laughs> look what the guy he said the funny she is asking me to read the conditions read carefully it says here the man he have to say it says here to the point that the women may not employ expression like I have given you a position I have given you a, as a gift I have rented you I have lent you etc the acceptance is made by man off after the woman has made the declaration his words must be demonstrated that he is satisfied with the declaration for example he may say I accept and look at this says marriage marriage guys this is marriage I mean that sex in the elevator is marriage unbelievable <laughs> oh boy oh god anyway this is Islam what is spirituality then if we go to the heaven we will see the God talking to us about let us see the spirituality in heaven if, if if you know when 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 two Jewish people they were talking about who is going to have this woman when they go to heaven what Jesus said to them he said he and she will not get married they will be the same as angels that is a spiritual heaven in Christ is spiritual happiness nothing physical nothing physical Islam all of it is about physical to the point this God he promised you women with big boobs I mean do you see how it's spiritual what a Muslim will be doing in heaven you remember the video we played just a few days ago where the guy he said you will be having orgasm for 70 years 70 years with each woman Let us see. Young, full of breasted women. Like the, the translation here changed. The other translation says big breast. Here it says young, full of breasted. <laughs> I mean, this is very spiritual. Because spirituality in Islam starts from the nipples. May Allah nipple you. Actually, I think Allah have connection with Napoleon. Because from the nipple of women, spirituality starts. What kind of God you Muslim try to present to me he is a spiritual who is not a spirit himself. And then when he speak about his reward, he start with nipples and boobs. Right? Spirituality have to be connected between someone have a spirit and someone have a spirit. Allah is not a spirit. Every Muslim agree Allah is not a spirit. So it's very stupid, foolish, even to mention, to mention such a thing. The relationship between Allah and the Muslims is as described in the Quran. Six, you worship Allah. If, if you go in the Quran here, it says, Allah, he created mankind and genie which is very funny many Christian by the way think genie is is a demon in Islam there is no demon they don't believe in demon they believe in genie genie are not demon demon is evil spirit genie is a physical creature he is he can have sex even with, with the wife of Muslim in chapter 6 verse 112 it says I 
Uh, hold on, not this one, sorry. <clears throat> Chapter 51 is 56, sorry guys. And I Allah, I Allah, translation is funny. And I created not the jinn and the human except they should worship me. So where is the spirituality? He did not create you for any other person for a purpose. That's it. There's a hadith Muhammad he said just to show you that that the, the God of Islam is sick. Um, I'm trying to find the hadith. Let us see this one. This one is enough to explain the mentality of this cult. Sick mentality. And this is a very sahih hadith too. Muhammad, he said, by him who is hand is my life. If you were not to commit sin, Allah would sweep you out of existence and he would replace you by those people who would commit sin and seek forgiveness from Allah. And he will burden them. Where is spirituality here? This is a very sick God. The purpose of your existence is to sin and to beg for forgiving. It's like entertainment for Allah. Allah, he opened his TV. He find like a billion a human being. Oh, Allah, forgive us, Allah. I commit sin. Allah, forgive me, forgive me. If you don't commit sin, Allah will get bored. He will tell you, all of you get lost. You are boring. I created you for different purpose. I did not create you to be good. Allah don't want good people. He want filthy people. He is the devil. So where is the spirituality? This is a devil action. And this is goes for sure against everything the Bible teach. You know, the flood of Noah happened because of what? Because people, they were good or bad. The destruction of cities was because they are good or bad. Here, Muhammad is coming to us with different teaching. He himself, he stole the story of Noah, the idiot. So how do you say that God, he destroyed the people of Noah? And then you say, for they commit sin. And here you say that if you don't commit sin, Allah will destroy you. Do you see it? Now, I'm trying to make it short as much as I can. When this guy, he's speaking his article about relationship relationship in order to have relationship with someone anyone can tell me help me like how relationship can be started how we can have relationship even between us as a human what is the first condition to have a relationship with someone not necessarily marriage i mean relationship let us say like if you if you don't trust somebody do you invite him to your house if you don't trust a person do you invite him to your house do you let your son go to his house or your daughter? Relationship have to have a trust. Correct? Can we trust Allah? 
Very simple question. Can we trust Allah? Answer no. How we knew that the Quran says so? The Quran say clearly that nobody is secure from Allah. And the funny, this guy in the article, they say the Christians are insecure. That's just the most stupid statement ever. We Christians promise salvation. Whoever believe in me and die, he will live. Whoever believe in me and die, he will live. The Messiah, he promised a person who is next to him in the cross, you will be with me in heaven. So this guy, he lied about the Bible too. While in Islam is the opposite. Do you feel secure from the deception of Allah? And by the way, here they said, secure against Allah plan. Where is the word plan coming from? There's no plan. It says, makrullah. Makrullah. Nobody is secure from the deception of Allah. That's why my book is called Deception of Allah. <laughs> Allah is the best of al makirin Wa makaru wa makar Allah wallahu khayru al makirin And here again the lies Look at this guys This is the translation supposedly and they the disbeliever Plotted to kill Isa, you stupid, you said the Jews, they did kill him. So how they are disbelievers? Are they Jews or not? If they are Jews, they are not disbelievers. They are believers. They kill Isa, Jesus. Allah planned to, huh? What is the word, see? see here, look, look, look at the deception. Here they use the word plotted. The same word, they say the plan to when it's come to Allah. You see the deception? It's the same exact word, which they should say, Allah plotted too. Change the translator. Go to different donkey. <clears throat> what happened to this verse? Okay, hold on. Huh? Look at this guy. They planned, and Allah planned, and Allah the best of planning. But the fact doesn't say that. Wa makar wa makar Allah. They, they, they decide to deceive, which means they have a, a dirty game, dirty plan. And Allah is a deceiver, but he is the best of deceivers. Muhammad himself, he said. Showing you that you cannot trust someone, his name is Allah. Uh -huh. A second. You see, when he lie, he says we Christians are insecure. I never heard of this before. Before, liars. There is none among you who is deed alone would stain, attain, sorry, attain salvation. It doesn't say that in Arabic. This is absolutely a garbage translation. Anyone who speaks Arabic can knew that. Let's read in Arabic. Allah Prophet says, None of you he will be attaining salvation by his work. Nowhere he says alone. Actually, I can do this. I can click translate to English, which means we have two translations in the same page. The one in the right will be translation for the original Arabic, and the one in, in the in the left is the translation made by Muslim. And you will see there's no way, nowhere it says the word alone. There we go. Translate to English. Oh, I don't know why it went there. Hold on. Translate to English. 
try again out we have to open it in google uh, browser hold on <coughs> I need to open it in Google because translation work only with Google browser so all right this is the same hadith we open it in Google browser what I will do in the front of your eyes just to show you the deception even in the translation you can trust Islam in anything even translation have to be fabricated. Translate to English. Hmm. What is this? Translate from unknown? <laughs> you, uh, uh, Google could not recognize the language. Uh, choose another language. Hold on. Arabic. Uh, now translating both the Arabic, that's not what we want. Choose another language, hold on. Uh, where is the English? Uh, hold on. Okay, this is English now. And why it's coming like this here? Choose another language, Arabic. See, it's messed up. It is it's translating both. No, we don't want that. Okay, well, it's not working, what we can do. But anyway, nowhere it says what they are saying, that your deed alone. It says it clearly, that none of you, his deed will attain him salvation what is your deed converting to islam saying shahada praying to allah five times going to do jihad etc this is the deed of a muslim all his life killing some christians some jews some hindus so your deed will not secure you to go to heaven so what will secure me they said to him not even your prophet he said not even i but that Allah warped me with in his mercy and he grant me burden. Do you see it? And by the way, here the translation is false. When he said here, not even I, huh? he says, Illa an except not the translation is false again. Except if he warped me, if he warped me with his mercy and grant me burden. Same hadith, different translation. Just to show you the deception, amazing how, how they deceive. The Messenger of Allah said, follow the right path, face strictly, etc. And stead, uh, fast and keep in your mind, okay? And then he said, and keep in mind that none of you achieve salvation through his good actions, his deeds. See, here there's no word alone. What happened? The same, the same story, the word alone is gone. Because it, it makes a huge difference by saying alone. He did not say alone. And then he, someone asked, not even you, Messenger of Allah? He said, not even I, unless Allah. You see, unless it's a condition. And the other translation, they make it, Allah granted me. But here it's not granted him yet. Unless Allah granted me, grants me his mercy and grace. Muhammad himself is not sure he will go to heaven. In the top of that, I don't want to forget this. Additional to all what we said, which Allah is not a spirit, spiritual way, Islam is a physical reward, is a physical act, is a, is a ritual, physical ritual, nothing is spiritual. But look at this. Muslim, they believe in destiny. So how you can have a relationship if you are not free? Here we notice we can't trust Allah. Allah is, Allah is, is a deceiver. Hmm? Allah is a deceiver. Actually, in different hadith, he said, لا آمن مكر الله.
In fact, they say that the one who trusts Allah is one of the biggest sin in Islam. <laughs> this is a fatwa. Islamweb.com. .net, sorry. The question is, I will translate the whole page to English. Can we feel secure from the deception of Allah? Can we feel secure from Makr Allah? Hmm? The question is saying. It says here, he's, he's quoting a hadith. I cannot trust the deception of Allah, the, 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 the plotted plan of Allah. And then, even if one of my foot is in heaven. And this is in your side, it says, and this is a word, this is a statement or hadith coming from Abi Bakr al Siddiq, the Caliphate. Abi Bakr al Siddiq saying, I cannot trust Allah. The deception of Allah, even if I have one foot inside heaven, it's not enough to trust him. So can you explain to me, he's saying, can you explain to me what does that mean? Here they are saying to him, thank you for etc. asking us, and look what he says. And Ibn Mas'ud, from Ibn Mas'ud, one of the biggest scholars of Islam, and his companion of Muhammad, who Muslim, they should take his Quran, by the way, but they throw it in the garbage, Paul, from the biggest sin ever a human being can do against Allah is to take to associate with him someone to worship and to trust Allah that he will not deceive you um, to, to be secure from the Makr of Allah translation to English uh, says translate I mean English uh, yeah, uh, Google is messed up it's in Arabic already. What we'll translate to Arabic? <coughs> Let us see. English. Hmm. Again, this is the question saying the person he is loving you in the name of Allah, whatever. And uh, <laughs> guys, look at look look at look at Google translation. Look at the correct translation of Google. Do you, do you see the word deception? Do you see even this is Google? I do not believe, which means I don't trust. La aman Allah. Not I believe here. La aman here. The word amana is not the same as iman. Aman here. I am secure. I don't trust Allah deception, even if one of my feet in heaven. And the guy saying, this hadith is mentioned in one of your pages, in your website, and it's connected or recited by Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, the caliphate, the father of, uh, of Aisha. How can you explain that to me? He's saying to them, can you clarify this? How, how this can be true? Here they say to him, thank you for your noble question. All right. And now he says, uh, Ibn Mas'ud said, anyone secure from the sight of Allah, this is one of the biggest sin, translation is not too much accurate, but it's, you know, one of the biggest sin against Allah to do is to associate someone with him and to feel secure from the sight of Allah or deception of Allah. Do you see it? From the authority of Ibn Mas'ud said, he said, the biggest sense of associ is associating with Allah and to feel secure from Allah deception. Do you see it? I will give you the link in case you are surprised. You might say this is not going to be true. Are you with me, guys? So how in the world does religion have us anything spiritual? 
if we have a God who is deceiver, he is the devil, we cannot trust him even if our one of our foot is in heaven already, I am not sure. And why Abu Bakr is saying that? We go to Muhammad. We have to connect the dot and I will try to finish with this because the video will go forever if I keep continuing because I can give endless reference to, we busted already, I mean from long time ago. Look what Muhammad said. This is the mad Muhammad saying to us something very stupid and will make anyone have little intellect to leave Islam immediately. Muhammad here is speaking about how we can trust Allah. Let us see how we can trust him. Muhammad said, and by Allah, by the way, you can read from the beginning. It's very funny, stupid. Muhammad claimed that you are collected in your mother womb for 40 days as a sperm and then for 40 days as a clot. And then for 40 days as a, as a piece of a flesh and for 40 days etc so that total is like uh, uh, you know 40 plus 40 plus 40 uh, like 160 days you are you are just you are you are boss is here when he said the following and by Allah a person among you or a man may do the deeds of people of the fire Till there is only a cupid or an arm breathe distance between him and the fire. But then that is written by Allah, between two brackets, which Allah ordered the angels to write. This is your destiny. When Allah, he created you, he sent the angel and he write inside you, either kafir go to hell, to fire, or you are a believer, go to heaven. So what is spirituality? It's a predestined religion. Read carefully. So this person is doing the act of people of hellfire and almost there's a cupid or an arm breathe distance. He's almost in hell. And between him and fire. But then the right in which Allah has ordered the angels to write, proceed and he does the deeds of the people of paradise and he enter paradise. <laughs> and then he say the opposite again that a man, another man, he will be doing the, the deeds of people of heaven all his life praying to Allah, going to the Kaaba, insulting Christian prince, threatening the Armenian to wipe them out of the ground like Erdogan, when I kill the Jews, etc. So a man, he may do the deeds of people of paradise. And the deed of paradise in Islam to hate everyone else. Till there is only a cupid, you are almost in the, in the doorstep of the paradise. And then the written proceed and he does the deeds of people of fire and he enter it. Where is spirituality? You see guys the stupidity here? What is spirituality? What are you talking about? You don't even know where you will go. So in his article was talking about, you know, uh, Christians are not secure, they are not sure, they are not attached to their God. What are you talking? God, he came to us as a man in the fire. How we cannot be attached to him? God, our Lord, he is, he is born of a woman. What do you want more? To be attached. So he attached to us not only spiritually, he came to us physically. Until now, you Muslim do not know who was Allah. Oh, what you know, he has five fingers, two hands in the right shoulder, one shin, shin in Uya. So my friends, when Muslim they make articles, their articles are not troubling. For us, it's troubling for them because we use the stupidity of this cult. Did we have a good time? Did we learn something new today, guys? If you speak different languages, please don't hesitate to translate my, my, my videos to your language. I really appreciate people doing that. I get nothing from it. But we don't want to be selfish. Like, what, you know, my throat is hurting me. <clears throat> Hurt me yet, I am here because somebody asked me a question I need to answer. Just to learn and keep it for yourself. Are you a selfish person? Help others so the Lord always see that you are a useful tree. The Lord, he says, the tree who don't give a fruit 
will be cut off and thrown in the hellfire. The time goes, and then the Lord one day will say to you, what, what is your fruit? I don't care for your name. Your name is a Christian prince, so what? You call yourself whatever you want. You call yourself a Christian, you wear a cross, you are not. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. Not from their names. Not from their color. You are black, so what? You are a Christian, maybe more than me. You are Asian, maybe you are one million times better than me. Who cares? The Lord will not know you from your color. He will know you from your fruits. We are the children of Adam and Eve. We are a family. We are equal. We are brothers and sisters. Racism is from the devil. Love is from God. Evil is either from, which it can be Satan himself, or it can be you is Satan too, you know? Because sometimes, you know, we throw our guilt on Satan, right? Like Satan, he made me, no, no, no. no you, you are doing Satan work, like Muhammad. So, your fruits in Christianity does not save you, but it is the way to know you. From their fruit, you will know them, which means you will be recognized by your fruits. A true believer in Christianity is not the same as in Islam. A person, he says Shahada. Jesus do not need people say Shahada. They, he need true believers. And true believers is a true tree who give fruits. So people can use those fruits. This is why when the Lord, they ask him how to pray, he says, say it like this, our Father out of heaven. And then right away he says, forgive to us the same as we forgive to others which mean you cannot attain salvation unless you became a forgiving person otherwise you are you will be forgiven and you will notice right away that our father out of heaven stand against everything muhammad teach revenge killing torture here right away in order to pray to the lord in order to have a connection with the lord in order to be spiritually connected with the lord you have to be a person who forgive Otherwise, you have no connection. So we can say in Christianity, forgiveness is like a cable, you know, like the cable you receive connection with. You don't have forgiveness, why you will be forgiven? Don't talk to me. You yourself, you are not a good person, you don't forgive. Teach yourself how to forgive and then come to me. If you are not willing to do that to others, why I would do it to you? You did not learn yet that the Messiah in the cross, he said, forgive them, Father, they don't know what, what they are doing. That is a spirituality. It's not a cheap words in an article. It is a fruit. It's truth. It is a fact. It's a practice. They speak about spirituality. What we see is killing, kidnapping, torturing, suicide, bombing, you name it. Where is the spirituality? Maybe you are connected with the spirit of the devil, but not with God. Because everything you do, is devilish. If you are connected with a true God and you have a spiritual connection with God, then you will reject all kind of act of violence and hatred. And you follow the Messiah where he said, love your enemy. When the Almighty God speak, the filthy Satan, he got busted. And that's what we do here. I want to say thank you all for being here. I hope the, all of you will download this video and share it. I believe it's very important because, as you see, Muslims they try to make articles and publishing videos, etc. All the purpose is to deceive you because you are ignorant, illiterate about this topic. And nothing wrong, by, by the way, to be ignorant. You know, like, sometimes I do not know how to read English words, but it's okay. My salvation is not there. But you cannot be ignorant about your Lord. You know what I mean? You can't be ignorant when you drive in the highway because that can cause you death. You don't go in the highway unless you know how to drive. Ignorance in some places can cause us to lose salvation or even death in this earth. So we have to fight ignorance and I'm here to help you. So we will not be ignorant when it's come to Islam no more. I pray to the Lord that all of us, we will share this video, translate to many languages. I, I know already the Indonesian are doing that and I really appreciate those people, wonderful people. They are doing their best to translate as much as they can. Uh, very, very nice people. Actually, you know, me myself, I never thought, like, I mean, my message go to Indonesia. I never, I never thought about this for a second.
I never even thought I'm going to teach in English. The Lord is amazing, you know, He opened doors for us. Not long time ago, maybe many of you was still so young compared to my age, I'm like 200 years old. In order to go in the internet, I have to dial for like 15 minutes, and most of the time the dial failed. It was DSL, very slow. If you if you watch my the video posted in the Iranian TV, from all the internet they choose my video, which is recorded by a, a, a recorder camera. You know those uh, camcorder. I was holding it with my hands because at that time there's no software like now. You can show the screen as you see a lot way easier. We have all the tools. You know it's totally different. Still, I was doing it, even though I know maybe nobody will listen. And guess what? My video published in the Iranian TV, and then in the Saudi TV, and then in the Lebanese TV, and then in the Iraqi TV. And it, this is, they, they were talking supposedly about Islamophobia. <laughs> so never think that you can do nothing. You can. Even if your English is funny like mine, who care? Actually, with funny English like mine, I can do what I did. So imagine if my English is better. You know what I'm saying? Millions and millions of people are listening and learning. And my books is translated to tons of languages. I can't believe it. I'm really so happy and excited to see that my books is coming in. Soon we will have the, Ch the Chinese. More than a billion human beings, they will read my books in Chinese. And I will publish it again for free. For the way, for those who do not know, today we publish our Serbian, Bosnian, Croatian book for free. In case you don't have it yet, if you are a person who speaks this language, you can go to Patreon and the admin, I think they are posting the links. You can download it, share it with your friends if you speak those languages. And again, the book is for free. And we posted a link for the Polish book, a corrected copy of it because in the previous post we have the font Arabic font is not coming right so we fix that so if you want like to, to download the, uh, the Polish book uh, feel free to do so too so I'm so glad to have the good ones of you uh, who they are helping and I believe the Lord always is sending me very good people in my way he's blessing me with you I'm really blessed. You know, I was away for a few days. I received tons of emails and etc. Where are you? Are you okay? Etc. Uh, I, I have a family. Reach all the way. I'm receiving emails from the end of the world. Places I never even heard of. Sometimes I have to search for the name of the country of the person who's talking. I say thank you uh, for all the support. And I pray the Lord he will help us all to reach out to Muslims. We love them. We will never hate them. We hate the devil and his evil, and we try to save them. And you don't save people you hate, right? You save people who you love, and we love the Muslims. So thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And as always I say, no God when evil is exist and Islam is a pure evil, pure evil. The Lord, he speak about Islam as the following, be aware of false prophets who come to you in the clothes of a sheep, but it's a wolf. We don't care for the clothes. We care for the inner. The inner of Islam is disgusting. Islam is like a grave covered by marble. From outside looks so, you know, people wearing white, praise God, claiming to be religious, claiming to be good, they fast, etc. But when you go inside it, it's a dead grave, dark, like hell. That is Islam. With this, I say may the Lord bless you all. Christ is our Lord, Islam is false, and we see you soon again. And this is humbly your brother Christian Prince with you. And I hope to see you soon again tomorrow or the day after. We will see which time will be. Stay tuned. Subscribe to Patreon to be noticed or to, to be notified when we have a broadcast. God bless and see you later. Take care.